One of the things you touched on earlier was TRT. And I really appreciated your perspective on that because we've had a lot of guests that are on TRT and Harry and I have kind of had that perspective in the back of our minds are, should this, it, how necessary is this? Should it be more of a last resort type of thing? Yeah. You know, what kind how can you increase your testosterone sure. um, until you, until you rely on TRT? So for you as a doctor, is TRT like the last resort for a patient? Will you ever put a guy on TRT? Um, yeah. I just your perspective on that. Yeah. So, so great question. The three part answer to you, I'll try to keep it brief. The first part is how do you increase testosterone naturally? Strength training, resistance training, heavy weights. We're talking like quads, hamstrings, core, back, abs. Those big belly muscles are the ones that you want to be working. Um, that's been shown to increase testosterone levels. Improving sleep quality, not just sleep duration, you know, time, quantity, but quality. That means deep sleep and REM sleep are really important for testosterone levels as well. Sometimes it's a catch-22, though, because low testosterone crushes sleep, and it, it becomes um, a, a, a battle. Sunlight has been shown to help testosterone. And, in fact, sunlight on the scrotum has been shown to increase testosterone production as well. Wow. So all you got is go out there in the morning, first, especially first thing in the morning. Go out and get sun for 15 minutes and go out in your backyard and do it naked because uh, sun on the balls has been shown to increase testosterone. Not, a much, not much, but it definitely can help. You might be the first doctor that I've ever heard that's telling you. <laughs> right, there you go. I come loaded. I come loaded for you. <laughs> um, micronutrients are important. You know, zinc, magnesium, B vitamins are certainly important when it comes to testosterone production as well. People talk about eating cholesterol. Typically, dietary cholesterol doesn't convert to body. You have enough cholesterol in your body, so that, that's not really a big issue. Um, stress, you know, mitigating or reducing stress. We know that chronic cortisol elevation crushes testosterone. We know that chronic blood sugar imbalance, you know, uh, insulin resistance can affect testosterone. So working on that kind of stuff as well, all that can directly impact testosterone. That's the first part. The second part, how much does it actually do? Like how much can I move the needle? And I've heard all these anecdotes online. I'll tell you the reality is in my practice, you know, 25 years doing urology, doing men's health, seeing labs, guys come in and, and the number we care about is free testosterone right? Free testosterone is a bioavailable active form of testosterone. And we want that to be typically around 20 or so. Okay. 20 is a good target. Now some lab scale, it may be a different scale where it's a factor of 10, so it'd be 200, but give or, but nonetheless, 20 is our target or 200, depending on the lab. A lot of guys will come in. I'm talking like a healthy 35 year old dude has no symptoms. He just wants to get checked and his free T is six. Hmm. Swear to God happens all the time. Somewhere between six, eight, nine, consistently I'll see these guys with no symptoms or maybe a little bit of cognitive stuff, 35 years old, healthy, six. And so if you were to do all of the stuff I just talked about, the natural approaches consistently for three months to six months, what I have found is that'll get you maybe nine, 10, 11, 12, maybe. So it helps. Yes. And you have a long way to go still. This is what I find. And the problem is most guys are not going to be vigilant enough to do all those things anyway. So I talked earlier about, you know, lack of momentum. If a guy is fatigued, tired, doesn't have the drive in a bad mood, all because of low T, getting him to do all these natural things he needs to do is so tough because he's just not motivated. He just doesn't give a shit. Right. Yeah. And so it becomes a catch 22 there where the natural stuff sounds great, but in reality, it never quite gets you to 20 where you need to be. Um, I am on, T myself. Okay. Just to show you that I, I practice what I preach and my levels were eight <laughs> and I'm on testosterone therapy myself now as well. So I can share with my clients, you know, personal story as well. So that's the second part of the story. The third question then is, well, if I'm on TRT, like when can I get off of it? How long does it need to, need to last? You know, that's like, you know, can I, when can I stop it? And I like to turn that question around a little bit. So why are you on TRT? You're on TRT because your level was six and you know why we can talk about toxins in our environment. We talk about epigenetics from your parents passing down from generations. We can talk about your stress. We talk about your you know shitty diet, your lack of sleep, all, all these bad things that have caused it, right? A lot of that you can fix. A lot of it you cannot fix. And so one way or the other, your testosterone levels in the tank and I got to get it to where it needs to be. When I get it to where it needs to be, what's going to happen is you're going to feel like a transformation. You're going to feel like a new guy. You're going to feel like a man again. You're going to have the energy. You're going to have the mood. You're going to have the motivation, the drive. You're going to have 
um, the metabolism, you're going to be able to train and build muscle and burn fat again. You're going to have sex again. And all these great things that guys want, you're going to be able to have again. My question then becomes, why on earth would you ever want to stop that? <laughs> and that's what guys say. Guys like, you're not going to stop this, are you? Like once they get on it, they don't want to ever stop. And so that question, the guys who ask that question are the guys who are not on TRT. Because once you're on TRT, you're like, you're never freaking stopping this. Yeah. That's the real answer. Did you just feel too good? Yeah, it 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 fixes the the problem, and now you're driven to do all the right things you need to do. Mm. Yeah, and, and you know, a yeah. lot of it. There, there's some great science, um, some published literature around the transgenerational epigenetic effect of toxins in our environment. A lot of big fancy words there. For the listener, what that means is the stuff that your grandparents were exposed to affected their sperm permanently which got passed down to your father, he got toxins in the environment affecting his sperm that then got passed down to you. So you're you're coming in behind the eight ball the day you're born where you already have the 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 environmental effects of your ancestors that are that's affecting your testosterone production to begin with. So you you can do all the right things and that's probably why you can't ever get up to that 20 level I'm talking about because the damage is already kind of done before you ever had a chance. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary.